Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Hi, I'm Jonathan Sposato. I'm the CEO of Picnic.com. And, uh, you know, across all cultures, I would say that pictures, photographs, are still very much the single most beguiling, provocative, um, uh, and important means of conveying all kinds of uh, human emotion, our identities, what we're about, what we aspire to be. And um, uh, yet, at the same time, it's really hard to do something with photos, right? You think about any verb that you want to apply to a photo. You want to edit it, embellish it, enhance it, uh, print it, share it with somebody. Those are really, really hard things to do. And so what we've come along with Picnic is that Picnic gives everyday real people photo editing superpowers right in a browser. So. With Picnic, you can channel your inner uh, uh, rock star photographer. You're never really more than one or two clicks away from feeling like you can, you can be like a new Annie Leibovitz or, a, or an Ansel Adams or an Henri Cocteau Bresson. So um, I want to talk a little bit about our total addressable market. Um, companies like Adobe and Corel will talk about that in this country, in North America alone, that there are 40 million plus what they call creative non-professionals. Um, well, I say that that's actually not broad enough. That's not a big enough market because that 40 million plus doesn't include people like my mom, for example, or my cousins who are on Facebook. So I say that we, we need to include those folks, and, uh, and in doing so, Picnic actually uh, uh, is easy enough and fun enough to include uh, everyone. So we go pretty broad here. Um, our mission is to create a game-changing app that makes any photos activity downright fun, right? So far, that really hasn't happened, right? Things like Photoshop and Corel's products are really, really hard to use, so we want to make that fun and easy. Um, we want to also, through our API model, give users of great photo sites, anywhere that your photos might be, places like Flickr, Facebook, uh, you know, web shots, we want to give those people photo editing superpowers. So you can be on those sites, find Picnic very easily, edit your photo in situ with your Facebook experience or your Flickr experience, save it right back to uh, uh, your album, uh, all without leaving those experiences. And we've got a fantastic model for that. Uh, we want to also break down walled gardens between photo sites and social networks. That's, I think, an important place uh, for us to be. Um, and lastly, uh, we think it'd be fun to make Picnic an internet verb. And uh, in some ways, that that's happened. We see people Twittering all the time, hey, did you picnic that photo? Look at the photo that I just picnic. And actually, if you Google picnic, as in P-I-C-N-I-C, -I -I spelled correctly, Google will return with the top search result, picnic, P-I-C-N-I-K. So that's kind of cool. Um, here's the team. Um, none of us went to any good schools. Um, <laughs> I don't have an MBA, um, shipped a few products at companies like Microsoft and, and Google and done a few startups, uh, but my business partners, they make me, uh, they make my job look really easy and they're super smart and done a lot of great things and they're fantastic engineers. Um, we're an 18 person team, we're very user experience focused. Uh, we have a history of actually creating a lot of award winning consumer products and we're very proud of that heritage and we're located here downtown in the terminal sales building, right by Pike Place Market so we're close by. Um, so why are we interesting? Well, we, we do lay claim right now fairly confidently to the fact that we are a best of breed photos experience. So when we started out three years ago, we used to be sort of tepid, a little timid about, well, we want to be the, you know, a really good, decent, online web experience if you're on a Tuesday. Now we can confidently say that as our traffic has scaled up, we're now 30 million visits a month. That's about 11 million uniques a month. At any one given time, any given day, there are about a million people using Picnic. Um, we can confidently say that, and, 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 and with the user feedback that we've gotten, which we're very, very disciplined about taking a look at and driving it right back to the team, um, we're fairly confident that we can lay claim to a leadership position that Picnic is the world's best photo editor. It may not be the most you know, technically accomplished, it may not be the most feature rich, but it's the most useful, fun, and ubiquitous. Um, oh, okay, that was a false ding. Okay, I'm like, I'm only on slide three, uh, uh, but fair enough. 
Um, so so um, uh, um, I, we also think that picnic is highly disruptive. So we are, uh, we feel like that we're stealing share away from the traditional folks. Um, and that includes both the, um, basically all of the big companies, um, folks like Adobe that are creating with their whole Photoshop suite of tools, companies like Corel, uh, even companies like um, Google and Microsoft that have other solutions. Uh, we become a very, very viable uh, consumer option for, for, for those same users. Um, we're, we keep growing and, uh, and we're really excited about our growth currently uh, and we want to make more. So um, here are some stats that I've already gone over. Um, uh, what actually is, is probably the most interesting thing for me to underscore on this slide is the fact that Picnic, the average session time. So we're talking about um, uh, over 18 minutes. That's an average uh, session time for us. And that's, that's an interesting and, and really strong measure, I think, of engagement, user engagement, that people spend a lot of time on our experience. Um, here's a slide that talks about how we're doing uh, compared with our competitors. So here's Picnic on the slide. Uh, along with um, uh, other products such as Photoflexer, uh, who was a pretty, pretty strong competitor to ours. They were actually more feature rich than us, but we, I think, are a proof point that you don't have to have the most amount of features. You have to just be the most fun, and um, as well as Adobe's Photoshop.com. And, uh, and I think the ecosystem is big enough for a lot of different players to be involved, and so the customer has choices. Um, but, but we feel pretty good about the fact that our traffic is uh, an order of magnitude higher than theirs. You'll see that our traffic lately has sort of started to slow down, and we know exactly why. Um, it seems to be that every time that we push out more innovation, we add more features, we'll add fancy collages, uh, or we'll add some vanity suite of features, you know, wrinkle removal, eye color change, all of a sudden we'll get a burst of users. So that indicates to me that there's a lot more opportunity and a lot more headroom for us to go through our uh, roadmap and, and, and push out greater innovation. Um, we've actually been uh, um, talked about quite a bit in mainstream media and uh, print media, uh, and, and that's been pretty fantastic, and um, uh, Walt Mossberg has been very kind to us. And sometimes other people uh, uh, can say it better than you. Um, and this is the earlier uh, thing that I wanted to show. When you Google picnic spelled correctly, you will get uh, results back for PIC and IK. So that's a lot of fun. Questions? So, so Jonathan, you probably deserve an extra minute or two for the false ding, but uh, um, uh, <laughs> one of the things you guys have always been uh, committed to is uh, is monetization as well as providing a great product. You know, but having such a great product, people are willing to pay for it. What have you been learning along the way about you know kind of what types of customers, what types of users actually decide to buy yeah. versus decide to use just your free version? That's right. We've actually learned. Thank you, Matt, for that great question. Um, we actually. We have been learning quite a bit about that. We were total neophytes at the beginning. We made a bunch of assumptions about who we thought would pay for this product, and as it turns out, it's very different. <laughs> so, um, um, and and we're definitely going where the money is. Um, I'm happy to report that number one, the company is actually cash flow positive, so that's a really fantastic thing. Um, we have three different ways that we make money, and and we look at those three different ways to kind of target slightly different folks, um, and I'll, I'll enumerate them. The major way that we make money is actually through our Picnic Premium subscription, which costs $25 a year. So there's always going to be a percentage of people when they're using your free product that will upgrade and want to pay more for some extra bells and whistles. And that's a fantastic uh, uh, audience for us. And we actually find that we get a lot of what I call sort of mommy bloggers or mommy scrapbookers. These are women who um, um, have a lot of discretionary income. Uh, they have children, so they take lots and lots of pictures. And they are sort of the CIO of the family or the chief information officer, where they are the dispenser of photos to the grandparents, to the cousins, to the friends, and they want to create and have a simple and fun tool to be able to make um, holiday cards or collages that they can uh, commemorate uh, events and, 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 and create memories with. So that's a great audience for us. Um, that audience actually happens to coincide, be fairly consistent with um, uh, the second way that we make money, which is um, through display advertising. And uh, I would, I, while I would give us perhaps a C plus or a B minus on the first 
uh, attacking the first problem, uh, I would give ourselves uh, a, probably a D uh, on attacking a second one. I think that we have a lot more headroom to go there. But nevertheless, we are making a few bucks there, and that's helping to um, um, uh, 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 keep our um, revenue situation uh, positive. Um, and a third way that we make money is um, um, through the embodiment of print products. So we have partnerships with other companies. These are companies such as Coop, who uh, offer mugs and t-shirts and hats and other kinds of products, um, books, and uh, our users are able to take the picture that they've just picnicked and put them on those products and purchase them and we rev share with those companies. Uh, kind of related to that, Jonathan, do you, um, how do you extend the brand? Could you do video editing? We, we could, and we actually got, if I had a nickel for every time we, I got that question. Um, so uh, I'm absolutely blown away by the adoption of things like the flip camera and how, how video is becoming more and more ubiquitous. Um, we, we do, generally we think that that's something that's, that's an important scenario for us to pay attention to. It's not an investment that we're making right now, um, because fundamentally right now it's still a very, very, it's a, it's a different user scenario. Um, but, um, uh, and, and I think that there are also challenges associated with how do you picnicize the video experience. I think that there are some very, very complicated um, um, UI design challenges associated with just, you take any sort of first order uh, verb that you want to apply to a video. Um, to edit it or just change the timing or to add a title card. Those are things that um, we have not, uh, we're not sufficiently confident right now that we're very good at making those things um, uh, just as easy as what we've done with changing eye color, et cetera. So, so it'll be a little bit while for us um, before we do that. Other questions? Do you have any um, relationships with camera vendors or, or uh, local printers like Costco or others that, that yeah, I, the, 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 the short and honest answer is um, no. Uh, we, we don't have any relationships of substance. We, we, those conversations come about every once in a while. Sure. And uh, being a small company, we've certainly had to prioritize our, our deals and our business development. Um, uh, I feel like that that's also an under attack problem. But, but, but they, we know that the interest is there. We know very much that um, these people want to do business with us in some way. And um, you know, we sort of test drove a couple of those relationships, and they've been fairly decent for us, but uh, being a small company, we, uh, we have to really focus on, on what, uh, where the money is. So, yeah, it's a good question. Okay, thank you.